Y'all, can I be honest? Okay, can I just be honest and straight up with you? Your boy uh, got dead. Okay, I got dead. But um, if you're in this situation to where you like, John, I got dead and I like to buy nice things. And sometimes I buy the nice things before I got the nice money to pay for the things. Well, today in this episode, uh, we're gonna talk a little. We're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about financial literacy because we're learning, we're growing together, transparency, vulnerability, all that good stuff. So, let's go ahead and get to the episode. The ball podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball. I'm Jonathan Jones, and here we focus on helping student athletes succeed beyond their degree. Right. And today we're going to take a slightly different focus. Typically, um, we've been talking about like transitioning and uh, getting prepared for life after sport. And that could look like LinkedIn. That could look like purpose. That could look like uh, creating content, all those different type of things. But y'all, today I want to take a pivot. I want to talk a little bit about financial literacy. Right. And I want you just to know that um, this game that I'm giving, this is not uh, financial coaching or financial insight. Um, this is just me sharing my own experience. So extract what you desire to extract and um, utilize it in the way that you see and deem most beneficial. OK, so um, I don't know how long it's been, but I have accumulated a massive amount of debt. Right. And I would always buy things before I had the money to pay for them. And even with my business and with speaking and with the podcast mentoring and all the things I do, I generate revenue. But as I would generate revenue, then I would spend even more. Right. I don't know if you feel me on that, but it is just the way I've operated in my business. And it's not healthy uh, in the sense of wanting to be able to build and stack and have financial freedom and be able to leverage the resources that God has given me. But it would always put me in a position to where I was always the borrower and never the lender. Can I get an amen? So uh, in understanding this, this is uh, something that I've done even since college. I would get financial loan money and then I would go and buy the iPhone and I would do these things and I would always operate with a short term mindset versus a long term mindset. Right. So I would focus on getting the thing in that moment and I wouldn't focus on how is it going to affect me later? How is it going to affect my credit later? How am I going to pay this back later? Uh, am I generating money to be able to even pay towards the bill? Not even not even thinking about if it gets to a large number, how am I going to pay off all that? I was just thinking, OK, how can I get what I want right now? Which created a unhealthy relationship with money. OK, so um, today, as we were going through and I'm sharing with you all some of these lessons that that I've learned and things that I've been able to take away in this journey just through uh, one, through my wife helping me, talking with me, um, through my best friend, Mahari. He's also talked about, um, he's also talked about finances with me. We've had some conversations through talking with my dad and my, my mom who, uh, who looks at the books for the business. Like accumulating these things and hearing people say the same thing multiple times. We're gonna talk about how to get some clarity. So, so the first way uh, or, or the first thing step in the in this process uh that i've seen right is you have to create the why okay you have to create the reason why you're going to make better and healthier financial decisions that's what i had to say to myself why do i want to do this and i said well the reason why i want to is because i i enjoy giving to other people Right. In addition to me, like a nice things myself, but I enjoy giving to other people if they're, you know, there might be somebody who might be a couple dollars short for lunch. Hey, cool. Here you go. I'm not tripping. Like just this cool. Uh, or there's a family who might need something. And, you know, I'm talking to my wife and somebody's having a baby shower. Cool. Let's gift them what's on a registry. What is it? What they need? Cool. So my why is I want to be able to further the kingdom. And I want to be able to further the kingdom in a way that I'm owning 
that I am a conduit, as my pastor, Dr. Ever, Tony Evans says, I am a conduit and not a cul-de-sac. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm allowing stuff to come through me instead of stuff to just stay in me, right? If it be money, I don't want it just to stay with me. No, God, you can bless me with gifts and finances, and then I'll bless your people with those because it's not my money, it's your money. <laughs> oh, we haven't church today. So the first reason is we got to create a why. So what is the reason that you want to be in a healthy financial space? Okay. Then after you identify that, the second thing you want to do is you want to write it down. You want to write that thing down. Why do we want to write it down? We want to write it down because in the Bible, okay, let's get the exact text. So in the book of Habakkuk 2.2, 2, it says, uh, the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and engrave it plainly on tablets so that the one who reads it will run. What does that mean in this sense? We want to write it down. One, we want to write it down because it is scientifically proven that those who write goals down, those who write visions down, they are a higher percentage more likely to actually obtain that goal and that thing because they wrote it down. It creates a different level of accountability. And that's why it's in the word because the word came before everything else. So it was in the word first. And then science is like, oh, well, if it's scientific, then if it's scientific, <laughs> not scientific, wow. If it's scientific, then hmm, there's something there. Okay. So, so we want to write it down. I want to be debt free by this time. I want to make this financial healthy decision by this time. Right. So when we write it down, then we're able to run. What does that mean? It means that when you write something down, you're able to get a different level of clarity because you can look at it again, you can analyze it, you can assess it, and then you can determine, oh, wow, based on this information that I know, now I have the ability to move freely about the cabin. I have the ability to move faster and quicker towards that goal, towards that vision, towards that objective. And as we're talking about finances, get clear on that. Get clear on what it is that you want and then write that thing down. Okay. And then what we want to do, then we want to cut back spending. Mm -hmm. Cut back spending. Y'all, I, so I'm able to share this episode today through some information that I've learned. However, I was in a position and I was in a spot to where, let me just go ahead and show you. To where, look at this. That mug says current balance $7,013. Hello, somebody. Okay. $7,013. I was not being a good steward of God's money. $7,013. I charged up on a credit card. And I'm not where I want to be financially all the way. Although I do know that as I began to see this number getting larger and larger and larger, I started to say to myself, I can't pay it down. Well, it's extremely difficult to pay it down as it's continuing to grow. So therefore, it's in my best interest for me to cut back spending because if I cut back spending, now this is going to put me in the spot in the position to where I can say, hmm, the number is still outside of interest, which that's a whole nother, like I said, this is not a financial literacy coaching session. This is me just sharing my experience. But I stopped spending and buying other things and I started to um, get to the point to where I started to make payments on time. I started to make payments on time. And um, then this is, this is where we started to get to, right? I started to make, look, right here, you've made a payment. And my payments are due on the 10th of every month. So I started to make the payment of what they were asking for, 
right? Consistently. I was talking to my wife and she has paid off her credit card debt and shout out to her. Praise God for her. Cause she's actually helped me um, tremendously in this process, but she's what has paid off her debt. And she was saying to me that, yeah, you want to, uh, one thing you want to do is you want to make sure you pay on time and you want to do it consistently. And I was like, okay, cool. But then there was a curveball because this was something that I didn't know. This last part I'm about to share with you all uh, was the fact that when you pay consistently and pay on time, that's going to do the bare minimum of what's it what, of, of what you want done to be able to eliminate debt or make healthier decisions and all that great stuff. However, there's another aspect here. And the other aspect to consider is, well, I don't want to do the bare minimum, but I want to eliminate some debt, right? I want to be debt free. I want to have that freedom. How do we get to that? Well, this is the part where my wife really had to help me. She said, well, what you want to do is not only do you want to pay consistently on time for when the bills do, but then you want to pay over and beyond that after you make that initial payment. And I said, why do you do that? She said, because if you just pay a large amount, then it goes to the principal. But if you pay that first amount and then come back again, then it's going to actually attack the number. So now I'm, I, I'm, I'm pleased and really happy to be able to say that I, today, as of July 10th, 2024, as of me recording this episode right now, I have paid off $7,000 worth of debt. Praise God. Praise God. But you might be saying, well, John, how did you even pay that off? This is the bonus point. If you're still rocking with me, you're still here. The way that I was able to do that is because I, like I said, have a business to where it generates revenue. And if you don't have a business, and I have a speaking part of the business that generates revenue, but then I also do weekly webinars to where I have clients that, that pay me on a monthly basis to where I'm generating that, to where I can put that towards my debt, right? However, you want to identify what is a side hustle? What is something that you can do with ease? What is something that you can do with the quickness? What is something that you have the ability to do to where people can pay you for it? To where now you can do the steps that I said, but now you have the ability to take that money that you're bringing in and then put that towards that debt, right? Put that towards you maybe beginning to save. If you're already, if you don't have any debt, then great. But we have to have a way to generate revenue. And when we have a way to generate revenue, then it makes it easier to not only just make payments on time, but then to make payments on top of payments to where we can eliminate some debt and move some stuff around. Family, this is uh, beyond the ball. And like I said, the focus here is to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. And financial literacy is something that I have always ran from. I'm embarrassed to say it. I've always ran from it. Never wanted to talk about it because I was always the one in debt. So it's hard to tell somebody what to do. It's, it's hard to take it's hard to take the 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 splinter out of somebody else's eye when you got a plank in your own. OK, so therefore, I didn't want to talk financial literacy and I'm still not necessarily talking financial literacy. I'm just sharing my experience. But if you enjoyed this, please just drop uh, a comment on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube, but if you're listening on your podcast hosting platforms, then I'd ask you just to write a review. John, I enjoyed you sharing your experience about financial literacy. John, can you share more about your journey as you go through this financial literacy thing? Let me know, and then I'll continue to share as I continue to learn. But like I said, this is Beyond the Ball, where we help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. Till next time, peace. God bless.